The World Congress of Endocrinology is an annual meeting that's held in different parts of the world. Um, it tends to rotate between the, the major three continents, um, and this time it's, it's Europe's turn. I'm proud to be hosting the Congress in London at Excel. It runs between the 1st and the 4th of October 2015, and we expect between 1,500 and 2,000 delegates to attend. Um, it is the world's premier in the urology meeting. Um, it is a meeting without boundaries in that we, we invite the best of uh, the faculty that's out there to come and share their expertise with us. And as a result, um, over the past several years, uh, it has been one of the best attended in the urology meetings. The meeting brings together a number of like-minded individuals. Uh, it also acts as a fulcrum to drive forward research into certain common areas that these individuals may choose to uh, evince their interest in. It also is a platform where most of our colleagues who uh, practice endocrinology and laparoscopy are able to discuss what they've achieved to date, and perhaps talk a little about a little bit about what they're hoping to achieve over the next few years, and also look at ways and means in which they can engage their their colleagues from other countries in collaborative events, collaborative efforts to see whether they can come up with papers which have an international perspective rather than sticking to 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 a national uh, remit. I think the whole meeting is about networking. Uh, uh, the, the fact is that it is a very successful meeting. And it is a successful meeting because of the networking that goes on, both behind the scenes and during the meeting itself. Uh, because the meeting is tailored to endurology and laparoscopy, it is a meeting of like-minded individuals. As a result, they tend to come together much more easily because most of us who go for these uh, endo-urology meetings know each other, at least if not very well. There is a, 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 a camaraderie that runs through um, endo-urologists in general. And because the meeting isn't, say, the size of a meeting like the American Urological Association with 15 or 20,000 attendees, it is, shall we say, big enough to matter, but small enough to care. And, and that's why we find that the networking opportunities are much more um, pronounced, and, and, and we find that we, we work together as a happy family. So our, our, we, we've, we've looked at uh, a theme which is going to run through the, the meeting itself and it's, it's based around the three tenets of the meeting, simulation, collaboration and innovation. And so we're, we've got the program teed up towards delivering a number of uh, cutting-edge topics on these three three uh, subjects, and you will hear the the world's best uh, proponents of 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 these three topics talking at length about what perhaps they've done to date and where they're going with their research. So all in all, it's going to be a very exciting time for endourology because we have to simulate nowadays in order to get better. The days of practicing on, on live patients have now more or less gone because we have such good simulation models. We find that we can get the best out of people by collaborating in a number of endeavors, whether they're educational, whether they relate to patient care, or even whether they relate to having projects that they can work together uh, across boundaries. And finally, Innovation 
is something that we've been practicing as urologists over centuries. And it's nice to bring it all together under one umbrella. So that's why we chose these three kind of strap lines, if you like, for our meeting. The Turkish Endo Urology Society is very active. It has huge amounts of talent and we've worked together over the past several years trying to, to collaborate. I found that they are very receptive as, as a group. They tend to work together and, and bring out the best of their teams. And I've also found that uh, coming here is always a pleasure because they are amazingly gracious hosts. There have been developments both in, in endourology, laparoscopy and robotics and, and, and from the perspective of, of this meeting um, I think that's where I'd like to come down upon because there have been developments in other fields of urology but I don't feel qualified enough to talk about them. Uh, when you talk about endourology there has been advance, um, several advances in instrumentation, in optics, in the way in which energy sources um, deliver energy to target areas. In, in robotics, there have been a number of new platforms that have, that have been brought to clinical uh, practice over the past two or three years. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's just a question of time before we see more major players come into this arena and give us even more technology which will help drive what we want forward. We, what, what we want is to give the best to our patients with minimal morbidity and that's why the whole term endourology was was coined and it basically even when Art Smith coined it several years ago it was the closed controlled manipulation of the urinary tract and everything we do is is aimed at that we want to keep control over over what we're doing but not make huge incisions to do that I think it's miniaturization of instrumentation, it's going to be um, the, the advent of laparoscopic techniques which are done with uh, miniature instruments, with 3mm instruments. There will be some focus on single port technology driven by robotic surgery. The instrumentation that is used to visualize and treat tumors in the upper tract uh, is getting better, uh, the, the, the diagnostics is, is much better and therapeutic applications of uh, certain drugs that we now have available is, is much more precise. So all in all I think we are moving forward to, to deliver um, great, better patient care but much more precisely and much more effectively.